Hello everyone, welcome to A Slice of My Life. In a couple of my previous videos, I taught how to make these DIY cable tie or zip tie spinners in the bar style as well as the tri spinner style. And ever since then, I've been getting more and more interested and falling deeper and deeper into the pit of the whole EDC spinner movement. And I've also been experimenting with other styles of DIY spinners like this. Not able to make a Munson spinner, but yeah, but this as well. But while doing my research, I actually came across a Facebook page called Spin Space, run by an awesome guy named Fabian Botero. I'm sorry if I pronounce your name wrong, Fabian. I do apologize if I got it wrong. Fabian does a wonderful job running Spin Space, but at the same time, he actually does review videos on his YouTube channel. Don't worry, I'll link his channel in the video description as well. The one video that really got me really, really interested in spinners was his video on long spinners versus fidget spinners. And I realized after watching that video that I was really interested in fidget spinners, not so much for long spinners. I'm gonna cut the long story short, but ever since then, I've decided to experiment on a few other spinners that I got off different places, like these two were from Etsy. Actually, this one as well was from Etsy. They're from different stores on Etsy, and I will put the links in the video description as well. So everything that I actually purchased here, I will give them a plug in the video description, so check it out. This and this were from Addictive Fidget Toys. Now, I just want to give a shout out to Addictive Fidget Toys. Um, one of the acrylic spinners that I got here actually arrived with a crack as you guys can see I put some super glue and it's holding in place But when I contacted them and I told them that there was a crack they promptly sent me a brand new uh, Frame without any questions no extra charge whatsoever. So that was really cool on top of that You realize that the buttons are a bit different I've also been experimenting with different buttons that I've got from various sources These buttons were actually got off Etsy as well just to try the difference between a high-end button, I'm going to quote unquote high-end button, versus a DIY, you know, 8mm nut or bolt button. These were Chicago screw buttons and this over here is a flash tunnel button, as you guys can see. I've also experimented with a different type of bearing, which is ceramic bearings. So I've been really getting quite into the whole theory and, you know, back-end process, I, I guess you could say, of spinners, just to find out what it's all about. I even went ahead and I bought one of these, the Troika Minims, because Fabian does a lot of videos on high-end, I'm going to quote again, high-end spinners, which are mainly machined, beautifully machined, I must say, metal spinners, uh, you know, and that's actually honestly out of my price range. It's out of my price budget, but this, I was able to afford because this was about 50 USD. Yes, a little bit pricey, but this thing spins super silent and very long. And the main thing is that after watching Fabian's long spinners versus fidget spinners video then i actually understood more of the physics behind it and what makes a good long spinner this troika minimum over here uses a very small bearing uh way smaller than this i forgot what's the exact bearing that was used i think it's the one six eight or something i don't know but i i will just put that name somewhere here on screen and you guys can see this thing is still going and spinning and it didn't even take me you know a, a very very strong flick so it's quite amazing i must say now, all that aside, Fabian does some good reviews on high-end spinners and in spin space, a lot of people share a lot about their spinner purchases which are all very beautiful and it makes me a little bit jealous because, you know, I, I'm not one to afford those kind of spinners. I just want something to play around with and yes, I know collectively all these are actually more expensive but these are actually intended to be Christmas presents to my family and friends, okay? Don't worry, I got you guys back. I'll give you guys one as well so stay tuned for that. But I was so inspired by Fabian's videos that I decided to give you guys a review on 3D printed spinners. Check it out. Ta-da! Some of you actually know I'm really, really crazy into Nerf and Nerf guns. And I have very good friends around who own 3D printers. So, of course, I paid for these, but I approached them and I said, hey, I found some links on Thingiverse. So yes, guys, all of these five are links that are free to download on Thingiverse. They're all designs that are free and I will give them all a shout out. I actually found about five. I narrowed it down from quite a few, but I picked out these five and I asked my friends to help me with the printing process because I don't own a 3D printer. And uh, I decided I would give a review on all these five in terms of fidgeting, how fun it is to fidget. They're all not long spinners because they are technically DIY spinners where you have to actually provide your own bearings as well. 
Now to be fair, I printed all of these in the same color and I've used the exact same bearings throughout. That's to give it a more fair baseline. And the reason why I chose the same color is because it's more for you guys who are watching. Because I understand sometimes different colors could actually appeal more in terms of the design. So I chose a very, very neutral, transparent filament type of print so that color or differences in color would not be an influencing factor in terms of what's the design that you like. So let's go ahead and get down to this particular review. Also, thanks for Fabian for giving me the green light to be able to share this video in Spin Space as well. You guys should check out the video description again. I'll put a link to Spin Space and I'll put a link to Fabian's YouTube channel. I know I said that before, but I'll say it again. Now, all these spinners over here have buttons and that's just to be fair. However, some buttons actually came with the design and some did not. For example, this spin over here did not include a button design or bearing cap design. So I had to find a link to download this bearing button over here. I will not be doing a review on the buttons because they're just buttons for now. You know, you guys already saw you have many, many different button options out in the market. So it's not a button review, it's a spinner frame review. Now also to set a baseline standard, I will be using a few different kind of flicks and you know, holding positions. I'll be mainly using three positions and the first one is by using your index finger and your thumb and middle finger to flick forward or backward. The second position is using your middle finger and thumb and then using your fourth finger to flick it forward or backwards or your index finger flick it forward and backwards. So these are the three different positions I will use because I realize that these are the main positions like this, like this and like this. Okay, now I'm not good at the whole preloading kind of flick that Fabian seems to be a master of. I can't really tell what it is, but I think that it's like applying pressure in a different direction and then pulling it back to get a good flick. I won't be talking about that because I just fidget with these guys like, like all the time, just flicking it here and there. So these are the most common positions. I'll be using that as a baseline for this review. So since I have this guy in my hand, this is known as the mini ninja bar spinner. Now, unfortunately, this guy is my least favorite. That's because I find this area over here very uncomfortable. Now, on the edge over here on the side, you can see that it's rounded. So that's actually not bad. It's quite comfortable when you rest your finger on it. But if you don't have your middle finger in this area, if you have it about here, you're not going to get a good flick. Because it's like a step down over here, you don't get a constant, I guess, support or a area for your finger to actually press against the flick upward so that kind of sucks at the same time if you catch your finger over here at the back it's gonna be a little bit difficult to kind of flick same goes for this if you manage to get your index finger in the ridge over here that's really good but if you don't as you guys can see you kind of block yourself right unless you have it here and you have a nice flick at the back so that's not that's not too bad fourth finger suffers the same problems as when you use your third or your middle finger so this is my opinion on this guy. I'm going to put this guy aside, my least favorite. Next up, we have this guy, which is known as the one of those fidget toys design. I know that's the name of it. One of those fidget toys. Very, very rounded around the edges, as you guys can see. It's almost like a semicircle with some knurls over here or some, I don't know what you call this, ridges design. Uh, you know, uh, quite a classic looking design. It's a very, very fun design, honestly. As you guys can see, good design to get a nice flick with your middle finger. Then a good design as well to get a nice flick with your index finger because you can just have your fingernail inside one of the ridges, push forward or these ridges over here provide a good grip for your index finger to flick backwards. Same goes for the fourth finger forwards and backwards as well. However, these ridges are a double-edged sword. And that's because after prolonged use, I started to feel a bit of discomfort on this area of my middle finger and my fourth finger as well because these kind of rub against it all the time and they eat into your skin. So um, this unfortunately causes a bit of discomfort. If you are going for a spinner that you will only fidget for for a little while, this might be your choice, but not for me. This is my second least favorite, unfortunately. Third is this design over here. This is called the COG spinner, C-O-G, COG. And uh, nice design on the sides, ridges on the edges over here. Very streamlined design. Very close to this one of those fidget toys design. But you can see that around the main middle bearing itself, the design around the one of those fidget toys features a bit more material from the bearing to the edge of the frame itself. But this has a lot less. But then it pulls everything out and it has a, a bit of a thicker, you know, material on the outside of the outer bearings compared to this guy over here. 
So this guy, very, very comfortable, smooth on the outside edge as well. As you guys can see, curved edges. But for some reason, it feels a little bit longer. Maybe it's a psychological thing. I don't know. It just feels a bit longer. And um, spinning it is not a problem, forward and backwards. Not such a good grip for your index finger when you're flipping from up here. But if you manage to get it up here, it's a good flick because this, these ridges over here give you some really cool support, especially when you're pulling back. And flicking forward and backwards on your fourth finger is about the same as if you were to flick it with your middle finger. All right, so this is my most neutral design. I think this is not bad. Possibly my second favorite because I think that this guy ties with this guy over here. This one is known as the rare hand spinner and it's the most radically different one out of all these designs over here. The bearings on the side are completely in a different orientation whatsoever. This was the only three piece design spinner. Three pieces because you actually have the outer frame itself and two inner pegs over here that you have to slip in. So the installation or the assembly of this spinner is a bit different. You put the bearings on the side, then you slip in one of the supports or the pins to go all the way in, do the same for the other side and then finally put your main bearing in the middle. Now this guy over here is comfortable to hold. On the edges, it's rounded a little bit. So it's quite nice, but it takes a bit of practice to hold it properly so that these bearings don't get in the way of your finger. For example, this might rub against your finger and cause uh, you know, like some friction or it might slow down your spin, I don't know. But in terms of actually spinning it, it's very standard. And even if you miss out on the edge over here, you can still possibly catch onto you know, the spot in between the bearing and the spinner itself and just give it a flick like that. This is very fun also because as an alternative to just spinning it, you can have it in your hand like that and just fiddle with the bearing on the side. And that's honestly quite fun sometimes. Put it on the table and, you know, play like as if it's a, I don't know what you call it, a hoverboard? Yeah, something like that. Just rub it around, roll it around, rub it around. Sorry guys. But yeah, just rub it around or roll it around or spin it, flick it, whatever. So this guy is actually quite fun so these two are tight next up is my number one choice this is my favorite spinner design out of all five this is known as the dual wave spinner now it's a different take on a traditional spinner style as you guys can see it's two waves over here the only gripe i have about it is that the edges on the side are not as rounded as compared to this guy which happens to be the most comfortable because it's the most rounded but also has a good amount of flat this guy is almost completely just flat almost completely but the design of this thing is really really fun it provides for a really comfortable hold and a really comfortable flick all the time and that's because of this design over here this thing is really versatile you could have it this orientation or this orientation depending on how you like it like your middle finger could rub on this edge over here and give it a flick like that or if you don't like that so much flip it over have your middle finger run on this edge instead same goes for the other two, uh, you know, flicking methods. It's really honestly quite fun. It's a really unique design to look at as well. It's cool in my opinion and I really like it. It's different from a standard looking spinner. These two are the most standard looking I would say. But it's like a bit different, not really a completely straight bar style and provides a lot of spinning fun. This is definitely my favorite. Now one of the factors that I did not mention in this video because I did not want to affect the review and to be more fair is that I don't know much about 3D printers and I don't know much about setting things up and infill and stuff like that or tolerances so when I gave this design to my friend his name is Gavin by the way awesome guy thank you Gavin for helping me out what the goal was was to just download the designs and immediately print it out as is just using Gavin's filament this I think was in PLA and I think it's 1.6 mm filament i don't know what the filament he uses but the idea was to just download these things and immediately print it out and see if everything fit so for this spinner over here also one of the reasons why i did not like it was because when we printed it out the slots were not a full circle they were kind of warped at an angle they were like italics you know what i mean a little bit oval what's that word skewed yeah and so i needed to send out the edges of this so that the bearings could fit so this was not a good fit this guy over here good fit no sending required whatsoever so this was good straight out direct pr to print this guy needed sending unfortunately so it wasn't a straight direct to print i had to widen the slots a little bit in order to fit the bearings inside this guy was different the pegs or the pins fit perfectly but the inner middle slot 
was a bit too wide. So in order for me to keep this guy held in place, I actually have a dab of goop holding this in position. I did not use super glue because super glue fuses printed plastic or the filament plastic inside. Goop is easy to remove and doesn't eat away or melt or react with the 3D printed filament. So I use goop instead. So this guy, you need goop. And this over here, just like this guy over here, did not need any kind of sanding or gluing. So this was absolutely awesome. So this in all aspects gets my number one vote out of the five spinners that I chose to download straight to print and review for you guys. Now, I want to also share with you guys that this is a completely unbiased review. I actually played with each of these spinners on a daily basis for four days straight. So extended use and everything was all accounted for. The only one that gave me discomfort with a long extended use was this guy over here. The rest of them, no problem whatsoever. This guy just absolutely not fun. I found myself being frustrated, not being able to give it a good flick all the time. So this is out. Unfortunately, in my opinion, this is actually the coolest design, but too bad it's not that great and not that fun to use to flick and to fidget around with. This guy is a champion. So it really depends on what you guys are interested in. Thank you once again for watching you guys. I hope that this video was informative to you and let me know if you like me doing reviews of these kind of stuff. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into high-end stuff, honestly, please understand that it's well beyond my budget. But if you guys want me to talk a little bit about the Troika Minim, or if you guys want me to talk about these um, acrylic spinners from different Etsy stores, let me know. Once again, check out the video description where you can actually find links to Spin Space. Go check out Fabian's YouTube channel. Go check out all these Etsy stores. I'll also put links to download all of these spinner designs, spinner frames. I will give credits to all the designers as well as links to the buttons for this as well. All right, so that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.